Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. There are two facts about perfectly competitive firms in the long run that you must always remember. The first is that perfectly competitive firms are both allocatively and productively efficient in the long run. This means that perfectly competitive firms will produce a socially optimal level of output with as little waste as possible. The second is that perfectly competitive firms will always break even in the long run. Essentially, short-run economic profits and losses will disappear in the long run, returning firms to long-run equilibrium where they will earn normal profit. In this video, we'll take a look at graphing these facts about perfectly competitive firms in the long run. For now, let's begin by identifying long run efficiency on a graph for a perfectly competitive firm. For perfectly competitive firms, being productively efficient in the long run is about survival in the industry. With thousands of firms competing in a perfectly competitive market, Every single dollar of profit can make the difference between staying in the market or losing out to other firms and going out of business. This intense competition in the industry will motivate firms to eliminate excessive costs, leading perfect competitors to always produce at a productively efficient level in the long run. Remember that perfectly competitive firms determine their optimal level of output at their profit maximization point. On the graph, this is where the marginal revenue curve intercepts the marginal cost curve. Perfectly competitive firms are productively efficient when they produce their output at the lowest possible average total cost per unit in the long run. On the graph, this is a profit maximizing quantity where price equals minimum ATC, which is located at the lowest point of the long run average total cost curve. At this point, the firm is producing at constant returns to scale with as little waste as possible. If the firm were to scale back production and reduce its plant capacity, it would face economies of scale and higher total costs per unit. If the firm were to boost its production at greater plant capacity, it would experience diseconomies of scale and, again, see its costs rise to excessive levels. As a result, the only location where the firm can experience its lowest possible average total cost per unit in the long run is at minimum ATC, which means that this rate of production represents the output level where the firm will achieve productive efficiency. To keep up with the thousands of competitors in the industry, perfectly competitive firms will strive to waste as few resources as possible and produce at the lowest possible cost, leading them to always be productively efficient in the long run. Perfectly competitive firms are also allocatively efficient in the long run. Allocative efficiency means that the firm is producing a socially optimal level of output. In other words, the firm doesn't underproduce or overproduce. Instead, it carefully allocates scarce resources to produce a quantity of output where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. On the graph, this is where price equals marginal cost. However, because the price per unit equals the marginal revenue earned per unit for the perfect competitor, allocative efficiency can also be identified where the marginal revenue curve intercepts the marginal cost curve for the perfectly competitive firm. If the firm were to reduce its output, the marginal revenue of the last unit sold would exceed the marginal cost of producing it indicating that the firm is under-allocating its resources and under-producing its products. In short, it should be producing more. If the firm were to boost its output, the marginal cost of producing the last unit sold would exceed the marginal revenue earned by selling it, indicating that the firm is over-allocating its resources and over-producing its products. To be blunt, it's making too much. Instead, the firm carefully chooses an optimal output where the marginal revenue of the last unit equals its marginal cost and profits are maximized, leading the firm to always be allocatively efficient in the long run. Aside from their long run efficiency, 
perfectly competitive firms return to equilibrium and earn zero economic profits in the long run. Remember that perfectly competitive industries have low barriers to entry. No one firm holds a massive advantage over the others because all firms are small in size, competition is fierce, and products are identical. As a result, it's relatively easy to start a new company, join the industry, and begin competing with existing firms. It also means that firms that experience high production costs or struggle to maximize profits can easily shut down and leave the industry. So how does this lead perfectly competitive firms to earn zero economic profits in the long run? Let's take a look at how short-run profits and losses disappear and how perfect competitors break even in the long run. Suppose that this graph represents the perfectly competitive market for good B. And this graph represents one of the many firms that compete in the industry. Suppose that supply and demand in the market sets the price for good B at $5. As a price taker, the firm will sell its output at the market price of $5 per unit and will produce a profit maximizing quantity of 100 units. At this price and quantity, the firm is breaking even because the total cost per unit of good B equals the revenue earned per unit sold. Now suppose that demand for good B increases, driving up the market price to $7. At a higher market price, this firm and every other firm in the industry will boost their output to take advantage of increased demand and higher marginal revenue per unit, causing total revenue to increase for all firms that produce and sell good B. As a result, every firm in this perfectly competitive industry has gone from breaking even to earning economic profits in the short run. As these firms go on earning short-run economic profits, entrepreneurs on the outside looking in want a piece of the action. With low barriers to entry, they gather the inputs necessary to start a new firm and join the industry in the hopes of selling their products and earning a market share of the profits. However, when a large enough number of firms enter the industry at one time, it significantly increases the number of sellers in the market, causing the market supply of good B to increase. Quite simply, with a greater number of firms producing good B, the supply of good B available to consumers increases as the market is flooded with output. As the supply of good B increases, the market price is driven down again to $5 per unit. At the lower market price, this firm and every other firm in the industry will reduce their output to adjust to decreased demand and lower marginal revenue per unit, causing total revenue to decrease for all firms that produce and sell good B. As a result, every firm in this perfectly competitive industry will see their short-run economic profits disappear in the long run, and the firms in the industry for good B will go from earning economic profits to breaking even. These perfectly competitive firms that were enjoying economic profits not that long ago are now earning zero economic profits in the long run. In the long run, economic losses don't last forever either. Suppose that demand for good B decreases, driving down the market price to $3. At a lower market price, this firm and every other firm in the industry will reduce their output to adjust to decreased demand and lower marginal revenue per unit, causing total revenue to decrease for all firms that produce and sell good B. As a result, every firm in this perfectly competitive industry has gone from breaking even to taking economic losses in the short run. As economic losses persist for these firms, entrepreneurs who can't cut it will look for a way out. With low barriers to entry, they close down their plants, stop production, and leave the industry. In essence, they admit defeat and give up. When a large enough number of firms exit the industry at one time, it significantly decreases the number of sellers in the market, causing the market supply of good B to decrease. Quite simply, with fewer firms producing good B, the supply of good B available to consumers decreases and the market output dwindles. As the supply of good B decreases, the market price is driven up again to $5 per unit. At a higher market price, this firm and every other firm in the industry will boost their output to take advantage of increased demand 
and higher marginal revenue per unit, causing total revenue to increase for all firms that produce and sell good B. As a result, every firm in this perfectly competitive industry will see their short-run economic losses disappear in the long run, and the firms in the industry for good B will go from taking economic losses to breaking even. These perfectly competitive firms that were suffering economic losses not that long ago are now earning zero economic profits in the long run. Still not seeing it? Just remember that short-run economic profits and losses don't last forever. Over the course of time, changes in supply and demand will lead to changes in market price, which ultimately changes the revenue per unit and total revenue earned by firms. Higher prices will lead to economic profits for firms. Lower prices will lead to economic losses. But these profits and losses are only temporary. The high prices that create economic profits for firms will eventually be driven down again as new firms enter the industry. The low prices that create economic losses for firms will eventually be driven up again as existing firms exit the industry. For the firms that remain and compete in the market, periods of short-run economic profits and losses will cancel each other out in the long run, leading them to break even with zero economic profits. And that's perfectly competitive firms in the long run. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my video on the long run average total cost curves and economies of scale, or you can click here for my video on imperfectly competitive firms. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.